Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to talk about steps that you should take if you want to buy a house down the road or if you're waiting. Either way, whether you're trying to buy a house now or you want to be prepared to buy a house if you think that house prices are going to come down, there are steps you should be taking, especially if you're a first-time home buyer, to get ready to make that purchase. Now, the lending companies are always going to give you a qualifying amount. You qualify for this. And for me, every time I saw that, to me, that number was shockingly high. It's like, there's no way I'm taking on that high of a payment. So that's my first caution for you. Just because on paper, they say, you can afford this payment. You know, right here, you can't, right? I mean, I would look at these and go, do they not know I have three kids? <laughs> but you do. So don't look at that number and go, well, I guess I can't afford it because the number that you're comfortable with is the number that you're comfortable with, not what the lender says. They have guidelines, 50% loan to value total bills. That doesn't mean that you should extend yourself to that point. Now, getting ready to purchase a house and saving the money for it is a whole different, different task. I would say if you are looking at a house now and you're looking at a certain house payment, and I'll just make it up. Let's say it's 3000 a month and you're paying 1800 a month for rent, which probably isn't even correct either. Why don't you go ahead and start paying yourself 3000 a month, pay 1800 for the rent, the other 1200 put into savings and see if that payment is palatable over time. So you want to go, okay, I'm going to lock myself into a $3,000 a month house payment. Can I handle the $3,000 a month house payment today? That's the best way to find out if you can't. Well, you're not handing a house back to the bank. You're not going bankrupt. You're not in big trouble. You just go, well, I guess I'm no longer saving $1,200 a month. That's probably the simplest way to start. The other thing we see more and more, folks, we see some really high car payments. If at all possible, get rid of it. Do you have any equity in your car? Did you buy it for $45,000 and you owe 30, you owe 20, sell it. I know you don't want to part with it, your baby, but it's a big payment. Not only is the payment big, but so is your insurance because now you've got both liability and collision. That's expensive. Go out and get a used car, pay cash for it, put liability insurance on it, minimal collision insurance. Now you've really lowered your bills. Get that new car later. More and more, we're seeing people going into the lenders and they've got combined, a young couple, car payments of $1,500 a month. It's a lot of money, folks. You should do your very best if you're considering buying a home, trying to figure out how to get rid of that albatross, get rid of that car payment. The other thing that you should be doing now, whether or not you're going to buy a house or not, be aware that there's always the possibility that can, inflation can raise it's ugly head yet one again. The last thing you want are credit cards or loans that have an adjustable rate on them. Credit cards adjust. You've probably seen that already. You're probably somewhere north of 29%. Just making the minimum payment is getting tougher and tougher. So whittle those away. Do them one at a time. I'm going to pay off this card. I'm going to pay off the next card. You've probably heard that a lot if you're a Dave Ramsey fan. But get those cards down. Now, don't close them because you're going to need the credit. So get the, get the amount of credit that you have on those down so that you're not being choked with that payment. But use the cards. Or go get some gas and then pay the credit card so that they show that you're using your credit that's available and you're managing it. That raises your credit score just like it did when you got rid of the car payment. Those are the two biggest things that I see that are going on. Shop your insurance. Shop your car insurance around. Make sure you're covered correctly, but shop it around to see if you can get that lowered. Now, one of the other things that's really crippling young families right now is, is daycare. Daycare is almost 400 bucks a month, some cases even more. In fact, 53% of new mothers have said they're thinking of leaving the workforce. And nobody really knows what to do about it. Congress is talking about allocating some money to get some daycare centers out there that are affordable. It doesn't have any legs to it. There's nothing going on. 
And, uh, you know, I don't think Congress is going to be able to solve that problem. So that's, I don't have a solution for that either, but it's, but it's out there. That's why I look and see when a lender says that you can afford this, they don't even know you're facing daycare costs. It doesn't show up. So you need to be very careful that, that you're not buying into that high payment. I'm probably going to repeat that several times. Don't buy into that high payment. Cause I see people saying, well, my lender kind of pushed me to this payment. My real estate agent pushed me to this price point. You're buying the house. So you want to figure out and sit down with your budget and go, I can afford this much and stick to it. If you can't get it, don't go above because you're going to regret it. 83% of homeowners past two years have regretted going above the price that they set for themselves. They like say the lender and the realtor, they don't know your lifestyle. They don't know how many times you go out for dinner. They don't know what you do with your kids. They just kind of look at your income divided by your liabilities, your debt, spit out a number and go, oh, here you go. You're fine. But you're the only one that can control that. And then practice. Like I say, practice with that payment. So you've paid off your car. You've gotten rid of some of your credit card payments. Do you have any other installment loans? Student loans are weighing people down. What are your options? Are you exploring ways to refinance your student loans versus default? Take a close look like look at that. There are a lot of programs out there to redraw up your student loans to get a lower interest rate, spread it out over time. Um, a lot of debate about going on about, you know, the government forgiving your student loans. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your opinion is, but if you're holding one, see what you can do to get that student loan payment down. And then any other costs that you think that you can avoid later. I know my brother, he was going to buy a boat. And he told my dad, he goes, daddy says, I'm going to buy a boat. And my dad goes, why don't you hold off on that? Because the amount of money that you're going to spend buying that boat, I can get you into a house. This was years ago. And my dad was a realtor. He says, I can help you with the fees. And I can help you with your down payment. Uh, but I can get you into a house. Then go get your boat. Well, now three houses later, it's almost paid off and it's worth north of $800,000. So he's kind of glad he didn't buy the boat. So put off big purchases. We all want the boat. We all want the camper. But if you're really focused on getting a house, get the shelter, make the right decisions, save the money. And then once you're secure and you've gone a year or two in that house, then you can look and see what type of steps that you want to take, whether or not you want a new car, whether or not you want to go out and get a boat, all that fun stuff. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, Rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.